This video was sponsored by Brilliant.org. More on that later. This week in Boca Chica, the chopsticks come to life and conduct their first testing, and some confusing work at the orbital tank farm points to further delays, affecting the fate of Booster 4 and Ship 20. Hey everyone, this is Ian Atkinson with NASA Spaceflight, here to give you an update on SpaceX's Starship facilities as of mid-January 2022. After months of work and waiting, we finally saw the chopsticks in action. On January 4th, the chopsticks were slowly raised from the bottom of the launch tower. After rising up a few meters, the two arms were opened and rotated. This was the first time that the chopsticks moved up and down the tower on their own since being installed in October of last year. Two sets of ballast bags were then attached to the arms on January 11th. These were then filled with water to simulate the mass of a Starship or Super Heavy vehicle. The weighted arms then successfully moved up and down the tower the following day. The ballast bags were then removed two days later. With the ballast bags now removed, one of the next major tests of the chopsticks may actually be to lift a booster onto the orbital launch mount. Eventually, the chopsticks will be needed to lift a Starship on top of a booster, but the timeline of when that will happen is entirely unclear. Also, some work was performed on the orbital launch mount itself. On January 6th, workers installed steel shielding around the outer edge of the mount. This will protect the pad's piping and electrical systems from the exhaust of a launching Super Heavy. Speaking of Super Heavy, there were two additional cryogenic proof tests performed on Booster 4 in December. During the first test, the liquid oxygen tank of the vehicle was fully filled for the first time, though with liquid nitrogen. On December 30th, Booster 4 was then removed from the orbital launch mount. At the orbital tank farm, the earthen berm separating the tank farm from the landing pad is being removed. Since this was intended to be a permanent fixture to shield the tank farm, its removal is confusing. We'll discuss this more later. At the suborbital launch site, we saw further testing occur with Ship 20. On December 29th, the vehicle successfully performed a static fire of all six of its Raptor engines. Later in the day, an attempt was made at a second firing, but was aborted right before engine ignition. At suborbital pad A, booster 3 scrapping is now complete. In August of last year, the booster's methane tank was cut off, but the rest of the vehicle remained. Now, booster 3 is no more, as its engine section was lifted off the pad on January 13th. At the production site, stacking is continuing for Booster 7. This booster is expected to debut major changes over Booster 4, namely featuring 33 Raptor engines instead of just 29. Booster 7 will fly with either Ship 22 or 24 on top. Meanwhile, the wide bay is continuing construction at a rapid pace. The structure is now three sections tall and the building has now reached half its final height. It is expected to be a little higher than the existing high bay, but as its nickname suggests, it will be much wider. This will create additional space for assembling boosters and ships. And speaking of ships, Ship 21 is looking like it may not fly, as all work on it has stopped. As of recording, its tank section, without flaps attached, still resides in the mid bay, with its nose cone just outside. The future of Ship 21 is uncertain, but it may end up getting scrapped in favor of future, improved vehicles. Work on Ship 22 is paused for now, with its incomplete tank section inside the midbay. Ship 22 features a few improvements over 21, such as a different nose cone barrel design, as well as different booster attachment points. These improvements mean that SpaceX may prefer to fly 22 rather than 21. However, Work is continuing on Ship 24, like on January 3rd, where we saw its common dome being sleeved. Ship 24 will debut several upgrades over previous Starships, including moving the methane header tank into Starship's nose cone, and likely support for Raptor 2 as well. Now, let's discuss Booster 4, Ship 20, and the orbital tank farm. As I previously mentioned, the tank farm is undergoing some new, unexpected work. Two new methane tanks have been added in recent months, though they do not have the capacity to fully fuel a Starship and Super Heavy. 
the dirt berm, which was thought to be somewhat permanent, is being taken down. Also, we haven't seen any liquid methane deliveries to the tank farm yet. These factors point to the tank farm having some problems. The berm coming down will free up room for additional tanks to supplement or replace the problematic ones. If this is the case, any launches, or even static fire testing, would have to wait for this work to be completed. In this extra time, it's likely that a newer booster and ship pair will be assembled. Since Ship 21 and Booster 5 were a set pair, and Ship 21 hasn't had any further work done, those two vehicles are likely to be scrapped. Given the current pace of production, Booster 7 and Ship 24 are the likely candidates for the first orbital test flight. As previously mentioned, both vehicles have numerous upgrades over predecessors. Booster 7 will feature more engines than Booster 4 or 5, and it can even support the new Raptor 2 variant. Ship 24 will also likely support Raptor 2, as well as sport some header tank modifications. Booster 7 features different ship attachment points, meaning that newer vehicles are incompatible with older ones. Also, the simple fact that these new vehicles sport several upgrades means that Booster 4 and Ship 20, which were built last summer, are already outdated. Given all these factors, it wouldn't be a shock to hear that Booster 4 and Ship 20 won't be flying. They have no doubt been extremely useful as test articles, but given that newer and improved vehicles are not too far away, their days seem numbered. I'd like to thank Brilliant.org for sponsoring this video. Brilliant is a problem-solving website that lets you interactively learn science, math, mechanics, and more. In fact, Interactive learning is six times more effective than just watching a lecture video. With a wide variety of courses available, you'll find something you'll love no matter your skill level. I've personally been working on their course in astrophysics, and I like how their lessons start off with simple reviews and examples and slowly build up to the more advanced topics. The lessons in the course break down several topics of astrophysics using everyday analogies and examples, making them accessible to anyone. You can check out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash NASA Spaceflight, or by clicking the link in the description. The first 200 users will even get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And that's all for this video. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our 2021 Starship Recap, where we run down all the exciting activities that happened last year. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.